That's a nice picture. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Oh, hiya. Hiya. You all right? Yes. Hey, you've been gone ages. Yeah, I've been out looking for my inspiration. Oh. Do you know, I don't know what to do about today's show. Well, at this time of year, why not something seasonal? Something seasonal? Mm. That's a good idea, something seasonal. March? I've been out longer than I thought. And welcome to Chuckle Vision. And at this time of year, what else could the show be about? That's right, spring. And in today's show, we... In today's show, we're going to... And in today's show, we... Excuse me. Barry. Yeah? Do you mind keeping the noise down, please? Sorry. Thank you. Now, as I was saying, in today... Just a minute. That looked like a Christmas tree. What are you doing? Bringing in the props. We don't need a tree. Strike the tree. Strike the tree? Yes, strike the tree. OK. No. When I said strike the tree, I don't mean strike the tree. It's oh. TV terminology. It means we don't need it. We don't want it. To get rid of it. Take it away. What shall I do with it? I don't care. Take it to the woods. Perhaps it can visit its relations. Hmm. Maybe good to see a football match, cos it likes football. But what's its favourite team? Nottingham Forest. Come on, Cedric. <sighs> Sorry about that. Well, what a show we've got for you today. I'm back. I can see that. I put him in the freezer. Oh, freezer? Yeah, don't worry, though. It'll be warm enough, cos Cedric's a fir tree. Ah, coniferous. Coniferous? Yeah, the tree, it's coniferous. I thought coniferous was Chinese. No, no, that's Confucius. Oh, Confucian. <laughs> well, spring is with us once again. And new life is starting to burst in the garden. And the lambs are gambling in the fields. Hey, they shouldn't do that. What? Gamble. Oh, no, it could be habit-forming. Me Aunt Ethel was one of those. What? A habit-former. She used to make dresses for nuns. Oh. Spring is a wonderful thing. A time when Mother Nature weaves her magic and the countryside vibrates with new life. In a moment, we'll be going out into the garden to see the profusion of colour which abounds. What are you doing? I'm just checking on the profusion of colour. Oh, it's very nice, isn't it? It's very white. <laughs> now, let's go out into the garden and take a look for ourselves. I'd rather stay here if you don't mind. Barry! Coming. Where is he? Barry? Oh, it's a bit cold out here. Don't be silly. It's just a bit bracing, that's all. I think I'll go and get something a bit warmer on, all right? OK, all right. but don't, don't be long. OK.
April shower. Ready? Come on. Oh, well, perhaps it is a little bit early for Mother Nature to start profusing. About six months. What? Nothing. OK. Well, in that case, let's come back in a little while. Say, about five minutes. Understand it. The garden should be full of flowers by now. Yeah. There should be bluebells and snowdrops and things. Mm. I've got a book somewhere. Have you? Here it is. The gardening book. Good. That's the book. Oh dear. That. Huh? <laughs> Don't understand that. Uh, I'll do it. Go on then. That. Oh, all right. Look, I tell you what. Hold those bottom two. Right. Right. Got it. Done it. Get back. Good. No. Oh, no. Close them all up. That's, That's got it. That's like great. It. That's the stuff. Oh, hang me coat up. Right, I'll hang it up. There. Oh. Now then, where were we? Ah, yes. Now, the first thing you must do is plant your seeds. That's it. What? Well, you've forgotten to plant the seeds, haven't you? I have. Oh, so you admit it. So it's your responsibility. Is it? Yeah, I want to see that garden full of flowers within five minutes. How can I do that? Well, you cut some flowers out of a piece of paper and stick them in the ground. Use your loaf. Oh. That's the one. Yeah. Can't you use scissors like anybody else? Of course you can use scissors. Use your head. Oh, what are you going to do? I'm going to sit here and watch the Easter story on Armchair Theatre. Oh. Yeah. And you can get rid of this tree. It was late afternoon, and all around were the signs of Christmas. Sparkling decorations, Christmas trees, and statues of Santa. And crowds of people hurrying and scurrying in all directions. It was Christmas Eve. Millie Murphy was out with her mum doing some last-minute shopping. Her mum looked in the trolley. Well, let me see if I've got everything. Mince pies, tangerines, and tinsel. Yes, that seems to be everything. Now, come on, Millie. Mum and Millie started to push the overflowing trolley back home. Why do we have to live so far out of town? Panted Millie. Mum smiled. Not far to go now, dear. I wonder how Dad's getting on with the turkey. Dad had stayed at home to cook the turkey. Cooking turkey's my job, Dad said to the family. And Mum said, <laughs> men, because she always said that when Dad got bossy. All day, Millie helped Mum and Dad and they were quite glad when it was a bedtime, because tonight was when Father Christmas came. When Mum and Dad had kissed her goodnight and put the lights out, she lay in the dark for a while, peaceful and quiet, huddling her teddy bear, Biff. He was old and battered, and one ear was almost fallen off, but she still loved him. Soon, she was fast asleep. Sometime during the night, Millie was awakened by the sound of a voice in the garden. It was a nice old voice, but it sounded very sad. Oh dear, oh dear, goodness me, what a thing to happen on Christmas night. Millie got out of the bed and tiptoed to the window. There, in the garden, in the snow, was a fat old jolly looking gentleman in a red suit. He had a long white beard, which he stroked as he walked round and round a sleigh piled high with toys. Seven big, beautiful reindeers stood quietly, as if they knew their master was unhappy. Millie gasped. It's Father Christmas! The old gentleman heard her, looked up at the window and waved. Hello there. It's little Millie Murphy, isn't it? Yes, it is. I hope you don't mind me saying so, but you look very sad. Father Christmas shook his head so hard that his hat almost fell off. Oh, I am sad, Millie. Look, these old reins have snapped. Now I won't be able to steer my sleigh. How am I going to get these toys to all the children who've been so good this year? Oh, I know I should have checked the reins, but everything's been so busy today. Then suddenly Millie had a brilliant idea. Wait a minute. I think I can help you. Are they long reins? Father Christmas held up the broken leather reins. 
Too long, I'm afraid. Oh, what will I do? Millie ran to the cupboard, dragged out her long skipping rope, and waved it out the window. I know, Father Christmas. You can have my old skipping rope. The old gentleman gave a huge, jolly laugh, and his face lit up as he threaded the skipping rope through the reindeer's harnesses and looped it around the sleigh brake. Millie, you're an angel. <laughs> That's perfect. Millie was so excited, she jumped back into bed and pulled the blankets over her head. When she peeped out again, there he was, Father Christmas. He hung the sacks and the presents on the edge of the bed, smiled, and went back into the garden. And a happy Christmas, Millie Murphy. I do hope you've got all you asked for. Millie wrinkled her nose thoughtfully. Well, I thought I'd ask you for a new teddy, but I thought it might upset my old teddy, Biff. I don't think a new little bear would upset you, do you? Biff wrinkled his worn-out nose and spoke in a small, gruff voice. Not at all, sir. I'd like another bear for the company. It gets lonely up here in the daytime. Millie's eyes were as wide as saucers. Biff had spoken. Father Christmas rummaged in a deep pocket and pulled out a little teddy bear, exactly like Biff. There now, young Georgie. You've found a good home and a friend. Goodbye, Millie Murphy. Goodbye. With a hop and a skip, Father Christmas was gone. Millie waved to him as the sleigh rose into the night sky amidst the stars. The next day, Millie told her mum and dad what had happened during the night. And her dad laughed. Hmm, men, I suppose you don't believe me. But dad shook his head. But I do believe you, Millie. It snowed all night last night, and the snow must have covered up the reindeer and the sleigh marks. But look what I found. And Mr. Murphy held up a pair of broken reins. Well, our flowers have had a little time now, so let's go outside and see how they're growing. <laughs> See, while we've been away, Mother Nature's been hard at work sending forth her flowers, heralding the changes in seasons. It wasn't Mother Nature, it was me. It's a wonderful thing how fast things grow in the spring. Just look at this wonderful abundance of colour. We've got uh, geraniums. geraniums. We've got uh, primroses. Primroses. Here we have chrysanth... Uh, chrysanth... Chris... Uh, chris... Chris... More primroses. More primroses. And over here we have... What's that? That's a pansy. A pansy? A frying pansy. Hark, I hear Father Nature on for his lunch. Ah, <sighs> just smell that wonderful fragrance. Soon the honeybees will be here, collecting their nectar and taking it back to their hive. It's a wonderful thing. Oh. What's that? That's a bee. You always have bees in gardens. Not that kind of bee, a honeybee. That's a letter bee. I know, it only stinks, postman. Bzz. Go on. Now, just take a look at this wonderful bloom. Let's have a little sniff. What do 
are you doing? I only did it for effect. Well, it worked. You effectively messed up the whole item. Back to the studio. Of course, with spring here, Easter cannot be far behind. Now, traditionally, Easter is a time for Easter eggs and hot cross... Turkey. Turkey. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's also a time for families getting together. Maybe taking a break and getting away for a few days. I wish I could join them. Some of you may be thinking of taking an Easter break. But for those of you who are thinking of heading for the South Coast, beware. A lorry loaded with sugar and a wagon loaded with strawberries has collided on the A31. This has resulted in a big jam. Excuse me. What? What's this? That's Christmas dinner, isn't it? Christmas dinner? Yeah. It's Easter. No, that's turkey. Esther's that woman off That's Life. No, we're doing a show about Easter. But it's Christmas. Rubbish. It is. You look in your diary. I'll have a look. How dare you think I'm wrong. Well, I'll look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. have a look again now. See her somewhere. See her somewhere. Ooh. Uh, it's December. I told you. Do you know what I've done? What? I've only gone and used the Gregorian calendar from the 9th century. Have you? Silly me. Silly you. And I haven't allowed for every fourth leap year in the half-centennial, bicentennial, quarter-century. And a bit. Of course. Yes. Or have you made a mistake? Now, what you see here is a typical Outer Mongolian Easter celebration, as described by the famous explorer Marco Polo and written down in his famous book, Around the World in 80 Days. Oh, How's that? Great. Now, you may be thinking that this looks like a typical, traditional Christmas dinner. It does, it Well, does. you wouldn't be far... No, you wouldn't be far... You wouldn't be far out. Because in Outer Mongolia, the years aren't quite as long as ours, oh. so they have to cram a lot more in. How long are they? Oh, they're about that long. Now, that's all we've got time for, so see you again. Hey, what about the hot cross bunnies? Oh, we've no time now. Oh. I'll tell you what, we'll use them on our Christmas show. Oh, we're doing a Christmas show, then? Of course we are. When? Well, round about April. Like Easter? No, no, that's that woman off That's Life. Of course she is. <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for, so till we see you again, have a happy Easter and a merry new spring. And same from me too. Bye. Bye. Hey, should we have some dinner now? Yes. Hey, what's for starters? Uh, I've got some fish. Some fish? Yeah. I love fish. What kind of fish? Flying fish. Flying fish, yeah. that's great. <laughs> hey, you didn't really think I thought it was Easter, did you? No. 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 I've got your Christmas present. Have you? Yeah, it's over here. Come on. Great. Yeah, I've got it in here. Great. There you are. How about that? Hey, that's brilliant. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's rather nice. Hey.